Auction time. This is the 6N series auction, 6N01. Uh, I made most of this on video. It started out as a triangular blocky thing. And I finished it out off camera yesterday and this morning. It's got a tip there and a tip on this side. So you could take your pick whether you want that to be the business end or that. All right. All right. Let's see. Six and three quarters. I think it started out as a maximum of eight as a possibility, but you know how that goes. Triple flow. Let's see if there's translucent areas. Yep. Transparent areas, actually. Right there. Around the edges. But deeper than just the, the very edge. Sometimes if you turn it at an angle, you can see through. Yeah, there you go. This black banding in the middle contains clear spots. There it goes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to get all the step fractures out. I sharpened it all the way around. It's just picked, picked sharpened. It's not beveled. It's just picked on both sides. What I call picked. It's not excessively thin as far as the edges go. I tried to thin this one down as much as I could without risking it. But I did risk it a little bit. Yeah, this is, even though it's triple flow, it will still snap. It just doesn't snap as easy as some other obsidians. Okay. There you go. Most of it's on video. 6N02. Same type of obsidian. It looks like. No, no, it's not. Unless it has some clear spots in it. Yeah, okay. Very similar. The color is a little bit different. But it's very similar in terms of the transparency. Except this is more modeled instead of doesn't have streaks. Yeah. Triple flow. Colors are a little bit different than the other one. This one is a hasket. I tried to I tried to put in some bold flaking, a collateral bold flaking on this one. Which means is they're just on opposite sides of each other to go in horizontally. And the flakes are supposed to be, if they're perfect, they're supposed to be directly opposed. But a lot of haskets are not like that. It's just kind of random, but they do have flaking that goes only to the middle on both sides. It can be random or lined up or slack or perfectly staggered, I guess. But anyway... It's not an easy effect to achieve and then still keep it thick. Because the more you try to do the collateral flaking, the thinner it gets. So you got to start out with a pretty thick preform. Almost like a blocky type of preform. That's already in the diamond shape. Yeah. Anyway, I think most of it's on video. It is ground down from about halfway. All the way down, all the way to the, all the way around the base. It is sharpened up here, though. Five and five eighths. So this is going to look bigger than it actually is. I mean, this looks bigger than it actually is on video because my hands are small. When you get it, it's going to look real tiny. Just the fair warning, okay? Five and five eighths is not eight and five eighths, okay? If I don't drop it, it'll stay five and five eighths. Yeah. Very nice material, I think. I'm going to make some more of these, but I'll, I'll try to make them thicker, much thicker. Twice as thick. 6N03. This one is Senonian Flint. It's all on video. Senonian. It's from, it's from Denmark, I think. Look at all that. What is all that? I 
I don't know. All I know is it's translucent. Yeah. And it naps well. Even in the middle of the flint nodule. Yeah, naps very well. Excellent stuff. Let's see, did I sharpen it? It feels like it's still dull in some areas. You know that? Now that I'm looking at it, did I sharpen it all the way? I'm going to sharpen it off camera if that's the case, because it's dull right there. Yeah, I need to sharpen that part at least. I think that's the only spot that I missed, but that's a big area. Yep, I'll sharpen that up right there. It's still dull from the abrading. Anyways. Four and a half by two and a quarter. Okay. All right. Six N zero four. I forgot the name of this style of point, but this is an actual style of point that was made in the in the far west or northwest. All right, I don't know if this is triple flow. Let's see. Yeah, it is. I tried many times to remember the name of this point, and I just can't seem to remember it. Mainly because I keep forgetting how to spell it, I think. That's why I can't remember. Anyway... I'll put the name in the, in the description of the item in the comment section. It has a name. Almost four and three quarter. Okay. This is ground down here. The base, the stem. This base is ground and the stem is ground. And it's supposed to have these little shoulders on it like that. Okay. I try to get rid of all the step fractures. It's not on video. I made this off camera because there's no way that I would enjoy doing that this thin on camera. So I got to do some of these off camera. Yeah, so I can get them nice and thin without worrying about it too much. 6N05. There's two objects in this item number. And I made these for Charles. But he didn't get back to me, so I'm going to offer these in the auction. These are made from uh, glass preforms that I napped on video. The two that I napped on video. They were glass preforms that were already uh, sanded on the surfaces to make it easier to nap. You know, they, they were sanded or machined or something all the way around. They were oval-shaped preforms. Well, I guess, well, if you want to know the video, you can ask me video where these are the preforms of these or the bifaces are napped okay so this is just clear commercial glass uh modern glass i should say commercial i don't know but modern yes okay and, and nice to nap it's not like uh heavy duty tempered glass you can nap tempered glass tempered glass comes in various grades from hardly tempered at all to extremely tempered that breaks up into little blocks. Okay, this one is uh, from the bottom of the barb to the tip is two and three sixteenths. From the bottom of the base to the tip is two and three eighths. This one is like a uh, Stockton, and this one is like a northern, northern side notch. Yeah, sharpen all the way around. Just clear glass. All right. I, no, they're not on video. Okay. 6N06. This is a box of bifaces. Yep. We got one, two, three, four, five bifaces. Some of this is high grade stuff, some of it is okay. These two are snapping halfish. Let's let's measure these. Five and one eighth. This is what I call black butter dacite. 
It has no banding in it that I can see. It's very buttery feeling. It's, I mean, it's, it's very nice feeling, but it snaps easily. So whenever you make them this thin, you're sweating quite a bit. I think I did this off camera because there's no way I would want to do it on camera if I wanted to enjoy the process. Yeah, but it came out well. I like it. I, I was going to make something out of it for the auction, but oh well. Let's see. This one is a banded. The same feel to it. It feels just like that black butter, but this one's got banding in it. And it's also snapping half-ish. Three and, I don't know, nine sixteenths. Okay. Thin. These are all relatively thin. Yeah, these are thin. By faces, uh, for the most part. That was a, not that thin. This was the thickest one here. This is the triple flow. Well, I guess this one's triple flow as well. Let's see if there's a clear spot on this. Yep. Triple flow. All right. So this one is, did I measure this one? I think I measured it. Yeah. Three and nine sixteenths. This one here is almost five inches exactly. I napped this out today just before the auction just now i napped these three just before the auction that's why it's late because i was sitting there napping at 3 p.m trying to get some more buy faces for my box yeah high grade stuff this is Sinonian flint denmark i believe danish flint three and one eighth yeah uh, this did have like a big turtle back on one side. I took that off for you and I straightened it out because it had a little curve in it. It was a flake. Yeah, with a big old bulb of percussion on one side. Anyway, it'll give you a chance to work some of this. See, it's the same stuff. Okay, you don't believe me? There it is. Same stuff as the other one in the auction. Okay. Yeah, 318. I keep forgetting if I measured them or not. And this one is a triple flow. There, the clear on that side. And some clear right there. Some clear right through. If you turn it, you can see it has clear spots. Yeah. Okay, so this is kind of thick. Comparatively speaking, because I ran out, of, ran out of, I was already out of time. Three and a half, a little bit over three and a half inches long. Yeah, I was running out of time completely, so I just stopped. I could have thinned that down a little bit more. But oh, well. Okay, so that's it for the items in the auction. Rules. This, these are my cheat notes. There's a better description in the description box below. There will be an auction every Monday. Please look at my previous auctions to see how they work. That's the easiest way to do it. But I'll continue reading so it'll give you a better idea of what's going on. You bid in the comments section under one of my pre-populated comments. Uh, I think that's self-explanatory. My pre-populated comments will contain the item number, a timestamp where the item appears in the video, and a short description. I will like your comment if I see it. Yeah, that's important because sometimes comments are not always seen. Some people, you know, they post, but no one sees their comments, or only certain people see them. So I will like your comment if I see it. That's how you know I saw it. Sometimes comments are not always visible. It may take a while for me to like your comment, but as the time approaches the end of the auction, I will check more frequently. Okay, self-explanatory. Try not to bid at the last minute. Please be aware that I'm using YouTube's time tracker and it's not always accurate. I use this time tracker because it's what everybody sees. Yeah, everybody sees it. That means it's above board. It's best, as, best that I can do it. Yeah. Shipping is free in the U.S. Oh, yeah. Shipping is free. International shipping is discounted, but not free. I'll add $10 for a light package and $20 for a heavy package if you're an international bidder winner. I will provide tracking numbers. I accept PayPal, which is my preferred method, Venmo, Cash App, checks or money orders, or a payment uh through paypal.me. Now, I used to send out invoices, but I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, I just can't do it because it doesn't allow me to do it. 
for some reason. Uh, winners will be announced at 9.01 p.m. Eastern Time, but the auction ends at 9 Eastern Time. I, I should put that note here first before I, before I make this statement. Anyway, the auction ends at the top of the hour, 9 p.m. Eastern. But it depends on your time zone, because if you're on Central Time, the auction ends at 8. If you're on Mountain Time, the auction ends at 7. If you're on Pacific Time, the auction ends at 6, okay, and so on. There's international bidders, too, which are, you have to figure out your own time zones on that one. The auction ends at the top of the hour. There it is. That should be the first statement. I will heart your winning bid. Yeah. I used to put a, a cut and paste comment to announce the winners, but YouTube, as soon as it finds out I'm cutting and pasting into the comments section, it bans me from commenting any further. So I'm just going to heart your winning bid. Okay, so that's how you know. You got to pay attention to see if you got to have a heart on your winning bid. At the end of the auction, I do a hard closing at 9 p.m. It's not a live auction. I just post this video and I wait until 9 p.m. and start announcing the winners at 9.01. I wait till 9 p.m. to start checking, see who won. Okay, you will be notified in the comment section if you are the winner. Yeah, with the heart on your comment. Okay, please email me your info if you're new at jackcrafty2 at gmail.com. All right, there you go. I'm sorry I'm late this week. Uh, yeah, I did a lot of lapping at the last minute. I uh, hope you liked this week's items, and good luck.